21 years old and my parents are divorced. My dad cheated on my mom when I was 10 and left up to marry his co-worker, Kay. In the weeks following the incident, my pregnant mother ended up miscarrying from all the stress. Kay married my dad and gave birth to my half-sister, S. I remember I always hated going to my dad's place. I remember being miserable whenever I was around them. I never had a bond with S and never considered her to be my sister. Anyways, I visited my dad until I was 15 and then moved to another country with my mom where she met P. P was an amazing guy who made my mother smile again. They ended up getting married and my mom gave birth to my twin brothers. When I moved to a new country, I cut off all contact with my dad. I was supposed to visit them every Christmas, but after my brothers were born, I felt like I finally had a real family and I chose to spend my holidays with my mom, P, and little brothers. Well, last year, S was diagnosed with advanced leukemia. I did feel sorry for her, but I was not in any way affected by the news. She finally passed away on the morning of my 21st birthday. Call me heartless, but for me, it was like some neighborhood kid getting sick. I felt guilty about my feelings because I'm very protective towards my brothers and the mere thought of any harm coming to them makes me anxious. Now for my 21st, I had a big party planned. I went through with the party and had a great time. I was careful about not posting pics on social media, but a friend ended up posting the pics on her Facebook. She tagged me in the pictures and my dad's family ended up coming across them. I was clearly having a great time in the pics with no hint of sadness. Well, Kay saw red. She made a Facebook post bashing me for celebrating my sister's death and being inconsiderate of my devastated father's feelings. She also wished death upon me. I finally had enough and proceeded to make a lengthy Facebook post detailing all the hurtful things they did to hurt me and my mother. I stated that my father was dead to me and that I wanted nothing to do with that family anymore. Lastly, I added that although it was sad that S was dead, I never considered her my sister and wasn't really affected by her death and that they had no right to come at me for living my life and celebrating my birthday. I ended up blocking all of them. Today, my mom told me I was insensitive and that I shouldn't have made the post disowning my dad and dead half-sister. I feel like I did the right thing. I'm happy being 100% no contact and don't feel any guilt for celebrating my birthday or for the post. I was tired of their shit. So, am I the idiot? I'm 24 years old and I recently married my childhood sweetheart. We had a pretty small wedding due to the global situation, but it was planned well in advance so we didn't cancel, just kept it to family. And we planned to have a party with everyone else at a later date. For some background on my husband, his parents had him pretty young. They were both 18 and 19, and he has a very close family. Our wedding reception was quite intimate, but we had the traditional speeches planned. Father of the bride, best man, which was my husband's brother, and the groom. It was only the day before that my mother-in-law asked if she could have the mic to say a few words when we sat down to eat. And we said this would be great. Big mistake. Stupid us. We figured she would talk about us at our wedding, so we never asked what she planned to say. She announced to all of our guests that she's expecting a baby. She's still pretty young and very healthy, but it was a huge shock that just completely took over the night. What's even worse for me is that I'm also pregnant and we plan to announce it at the wedding, but I told my husband to just leave it out of his speech. Everything felt a bit sour for me after that. After the wedding, I didn't speak to my mother-in-law for a few days and I got a call from her sister to ask what's up. I explained that I felt like the attention was taken away from us without our permission. I would have said no if I knew she was going to announce her pregnancy. And it was unfair to spring that on us. Apparently, I ruined my own wedding because it was obvious to all the guests I was upset about the good news and I was being totally selfish. Maybe I was, but it was my wedding day that was already ruined by a pandemic. My husband is on my side though. He clearly feels a bit uncomfortable telling his mom that, which I get. I don't want to have this argument directly with a pregnant woman either. The rest of the family is split down the middle, my side and his, because it was such a close family event anyway, we'd all need some happiness. Now I'm starting to wonder if I overreacted and spoiled everything. The petty side of me wants me to announce my pregnancy at her baby shower. I know it would be wrong, but I want her to get a taste of her own medicine of what she did to me on my wedding day. So am I the asshole for trying to ruin her special day because she ruined mine? I got married four years ago and my husband and his family are many times over millionaires. My family is just middle class. Our wedding cost around 700k paid by him and his parents. My parents gave me a flat fee of 10k for a dress which they are also giving to my sister too. My sister and her fiance are lower class. She has 170k in student loan while he has 110. They have 18k in medical debt and 35k in credit card debt. Well last night was my sister's birthday dinner and she announced she was engaged and wanted help paying for her wedding. She gave me a spreadsheet of how much she was going to need for her dream wedding. Anyways, her dream wedding is supposed to cost 100k and as her only sister, I need to step up and help pay for her wedding since her parents are only giving her 10k for a dress. She said she needs me to give her at least 70k since I'm rich now. When I told her I'm not giving her 70k, she cried and said it wasn't fair how I get whatever I want. When she realized I wasn't going to budge, she broke down about how I'm just using motherhood to be greedy and lazy. I have two year old twins. I eventually told her I wasn't going to be bullied into giving her 70k. She's 15 weeks pregnant, hence why she's in a rush to be married right away. When I tried to leave, she just snapped and said I'm a bad mother since my mother-in-law stays over often to help. Anyway, she screamed about how I lied about my postpartum depression for the first few months after giving birth and it wasn't real and I only used it to cover up how much of a terrible mother I am. 
an even worse wipe since I wasn't well enough for intercourse for a few months. I told my mom and my mom told her. I feel bad for her since I know she's struggling, but I hate her for saying that kind of stuff in front of strangers. My brother, who's usually neutral, says I should forgive her since she's stressed from crippling debt and has two kids and a third on the way. She's claimed I'm jealous of her since she's younger. She's 25 and I'm 33. And now since I'm over 30, my husband is probably cheating on me with the housekeeper and nanny for all I know since I'm never home. I have helpers twice a week, mostly just to go to the salon with my friends in a weekly date night. My fiancé and I are getting married this September. The issue lies with the dress code. We have been clear from the beginning that this is going to be a white tie event, so of course there are strict rules attached to that. One thing we are really looking forward to is our wedding shoot. We have spent a large amount of our own money on a photographer. The photographer is highly, highly sought after in our area and we were lucky to book him last year in advance, so naturally we are taking this seriously. The invitations we sent explicitly told our guests what we would be expecting from them. White tie, no unnaturally dyed hair, no visible tattoos or piercings, and that they were free to decline the invitation if they had a problem with this. We also sent everybody who RSVP'd a reminder over email several weeks ago repeating this instruction. This is going to be fine until one of our mothers has recently posted on Facebook a picture of a cocktail style dress she wants to wear on the day. Of course, this isn't included in our dress code, so we informed her right away that the dress would be unacceptable. Unfortunately, this has caused a lot of unnecessary drama throughout both of our families and even some friends. Both set of parents, cousins, some siblings, and many more people have messaged us privately to ask us to relax on our dress code and allow them to be flexible. We are hosting a private event where we will be able to set the rules. Having been to other weddings over the years, we have fully complied with the wishes of the marrying couple and we do not see why we should not be given the same treatment. Since we made this clear, we've been called assholes by people around us. However, in our opinion, this is our wedding and we've been clear about our preferences all along. We have even told our guests that if anyone has a problem with this, they are free to drop out even though we will still be paying for their seats now and not attend. Am I the asshole for having a dress code at our wedding? <laughs> they put an edit saying, Just so you know, everyone shouting Bridezilla is being very sexist. I am the man in this relationship, and while my fiancé and I agree on this issue entirely, I am the one who posted this submission. I was raised by parents who believe religiously and just culturally in rigid gender roles. Dad should work, mom should stay home and raise the kids. I'm the only girl and I have three brothers. Because of their expectation I would just get married and stay home and raise kids, they never valued my education. They never valued my educational achievements or emphasized things beyond domestic skill. I'm the second youngest and by the time I was in high school, my two older brothers had gone to the college of their choice. With my parents covering full tuition, books, and off-campus apartment and other living expenses. They eventually did the same for my younger brother and I was told I wasn't allowed to apply for college. I did so in secret and got accepted with a partial scholarship. I didn't tell them I was moving out until a week before I left. With essentially nothing, the only things I had were things my friends had given to me that their parents bought for them for college. I took engineering and had to work, take on a debt, and struggle. My parents and I have barely spoken in years. I'm married now and expecting our first child and they asked to meet up. We met at a park and they said they were sorry if they caused me pain but would like a relationship now. I asked them specifically what they were sorry for and they wouldn't elaborate and just said they wanted to move forward. I said that wasn't sufficient. In the end, I decided that I would forgive them under one condition, if they were to forward me $100,000 for my college expenses, just like they did for my brothers. My mom burst into tears and my dad said I wasn't being serious, so I got up and left. Since then, I've been getting calls from my brothers telling me I'm immature and hurtful, and I don't think so at all. So, am I the asshole for asking my parents for $100,000? I grew up in a very warm and loving environment, but from what I was told, I was lucky. My sister and I had two drug addict parents who never took care of us. When my mom was pregnant with me, she smoked and got drunk pretty often, and when I was born, my sister was the only one who took care of me. When I was two months old, they left us both in a mall and left, and we never saw them again. An old couple found us and contacted the police and eventually decided to adopt us. Today I'm 19 and my sister is 34. We're really close, but I still live with my adopted family and she lives about 20 minutes away. So a couple of months ago, a friend and I took a DNA test and that's how I found out I have an aunt in the system. I immediately reached out to her and we agreed to meet in person, all without telling my sister a thing. We tried to figure things out, so I asked her if she has a brother or sister and she told me that when she was 13, her older sister got pregnant while being drunk with her junkie boyfriend and a month after giving birth, she ran away with the baby after some pretty intensive fights with their parents. They never found her but stopped looking after a year and a half. When I saw the picture, I knew it was my sister 100%. My sister is my mom. We were never abandoned. She fabricated this entire thing to my adoptive family. After finding everything out, I told my aunt to please keep it a secret. I can't look at my sister in the eyes, let alone tell her I know the truth. After avoiding her for a week, I came to her house and I told her she needs to sit down because we need to talk. I told her about the DNA test and meeting up with my aunt, and that's when she confessed. She told me how she got very drunk at a party and slept with one of the jerks who does nothing but weed every day. She told me how her mom used to convince her father to try to talk her out of keeping the baby, and they were constantly fighting. 
When I was born, they told her on the spot that she brought shame upon the family and they will not help raise this baby in any way. After a couple of months of loaning from her friends and juggling between working, she decided to run away. She took us to the mall to keep us warm and we started crying. That's when the couple who adopted us now came to our aid. My sister jumped on the opportunity and came up with the story Anna and Elias. She knew all along that her parents were looking for her. She wrote them a letter saying she's never coming back and they should stop looking. Two years later, her father went on a quest to find her secretly. He met me a few times and I knew him as one of my sister's old friends from the park. He helped us a few times and apparently they would meet up once every two months secretly. Okay, so on my FYP lately, I've been seeing so many videos of like, watch my husband fall out of love with me, which is exactly what I watched happen whenever I went through my pregnancy with my boyfriend's child. So in December of 2019, I found out that I was pregnant and I was so excited. And my boyfriend was overjoyed. We literally had one of the best relationships during this time. But once COVID hit in 2020, I ended up getting laid off of work. He continued to work, but I felt like it was pointless for me to find another job just because I was about to have a baby and raise a kid. And in April, we get to find out the gender and guess what? It was a boy. I was extremely happy, but then I just started to notice that he stopped caring. Like, I would be like, hey, the baby is kicking, and he would just be like, okay. Completely monotone, completely blank face. Then June comes around, and I ended up gifting him an iPhone 11 Pro Max. Since it was under my name, I had access to see who could text and call him. And I know a lot of his family's numbers, including cousins and aunts, but there was one number that I didn't recognize that stood out the most. And the messages between him and this number would not stop until 3 a.m., which is when he would go to sleep. So I decided to go up and ask him who is more important than me and his son. So his response to me asking who is more important than me and his son is no one, babe. I just said, okay, and a couple months go by and I go into labor. He's not even excited and doesn't even try to care. A few months later, and I see that number pop back up again. And I also noticed that there was an exchange of pictures going on. So I decided to call the number up and be like, hey, who is this? How do you know my boyfriend? And she responded with, who is this? And why do you need to know this? Because I'm with him. I was bawling and I tried to confront him on it, but he literally denied it. And then he threatened me because I don't work that he would take my son away and get full custody. And because of all this crap, I just shut up and agreed to make it work for our son. And then not even a few weeks later, I see that number pop back up again and I lose my ish. Now, I don't condone violence, but the second that this man got home, I was so upset that I ended up punching him and he fell into the wall. I went through his phone and ended up finding out that he was also talking to another girl as well. So I whipped the phone around in his face and I was like, who is this? Now that I officially have this man's phone, I can see everything. When I asked him who the first girl was, he was like, no one. And I was like, no, straight up, who is she? And he finally admitted that she was a co-worker. So I go through his pictures and I see that they took selfies together, like really close selfies. And he also took a pic of her butt. There's literally a whole video where she's shaking it for him. I started bawling and I threw everything at him. I left the house for several days. We agreed to try to fix things again, but I'm taking his paychecks and messing around with his cousin now to get revenge on him. And honestly, him and his cousin look a lot alike. So if I ever were to get pregnant again, he wouldn't even question it. Also, if you didn't catch on, the other girl was his ex-girlfriend and she's still reaches out asking him for money and asking him to move in with her and even when we were trying to work things out he would constantly think about leaving our family for her so i literally thought people were joking when they were talking about stepsisters getting with their stepbrothers turns out it's not a joke and i just found out that my boyfriend cheated on me with his stepsister when i was a freshman in high school i got into a lot of trouble and ended up getting my phone taken away for six months and had no social media for a year my parents literally didn't allow me to have snapchat until the summer before my senior year but i was allowed to have an instagram so the moment that i was allowed to have my socials back i made an update on my story and within a few hours a boy that i had been talking to before i got my phone taken away swiped up we started messaging talking again hitting it off all over again and even though he lived about two and a half hours away within a week we started dating i actually had a few other friends that were dating guys in the same town so i was like hmm if they can so can i after dating him for a few months i decided to invite him over to my dad so that they could meet both my dad and him hit it right off the bat chef's kiss also, we can call this guy Darren. I noticed that he was super weird with his phone and he would put it in his pocket anytime I was near. I asked him what that was about and he was like, well, I just don't want to be on my phone. It seems rude. It seemed like a logical response, so I brushed it off. But the next day, a girl messaged me saying that she was dating Darren and also other girls as well. So once this first girl reached out to me and said that she had been dating Darren, I blew up in his face. She explained to me that they had been dating for a few weeks, so I ended up breaking up with him. But then he was blowing up my phone and threatening to unalive himself, so I got extremely worried. And I ended up just giving in to getting back together with him. And once I got back together with him, things were pretty much a smooth ride for six months. It didn't seem like he was talking to any other girls, and he would come to my mom's house on one weekend and then my dad's house on the other weekend. So we were seeing each other every weekend. And it was so nice until I got a message from a different girl who also claimed that they had been dating. So again, I blew up in his face and I broke up with him. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And once again, the manipulator in him made a reappearance and he blew up my phone just crying, saying that he was going to end his life, and again, getting me to fall for his stupid tricks. 
this time I decided to go about it a different way and get all the social media passwords. I would log in and check periodically, but if you guys remember, I did not have a Snapchat. So the day that my parents allowed me to have one, I went ahead and logged into his. So once I was allowed to have Snapchat and logged into his account, I saw him messaging multiple other girls, including his stepsister. And when I tell you guys I scrolled up on these messages and found out that he had been sleeping with her too, this had been going on for two and a half years before he finally called things off with me and broke up with me. We met up to exchange things and I gave him all of his stuff back, but he didn't give me any of my stuff back because he forgot. And he tried to give me his own stuff back, saying that we were on a break and would get back together. Because I called things off with him, he ended up throwing all of my stuff, like my clothes, jewelry, Beats headphones, in a fire pit and burned them. As if he was the victim. Like, what did I do to you? You were the one sleeping with your stepsister our entire relationship. After about three months, he showed up with a new girlfriend on his Instagram. And she ended up messaging me asking why he still had pictures of me all over his room and why my necklace with my name on it was hanging in his truck. If anyone's wanting to know how to get revenge on someone who spread rumors about you, listen to this story and it may come in handy. So I had a friend that we can call Miranda who was obsessed with me. I was genuinely friends with her, but she would never give me a break. I could not get a breather from her at any point in time. Everywhere I went, she went. And this girl would actually get so upset with me anytime I would go over to another friend's house. I knew she was really insecure and just trying to get attention, so I tried to be patient with her. However, one day I just could not take it anymore. I got into a massive fight with her over how overprotective she is. I literally said, you are a stage five clinger and in response this girl ended up joining my basketball and softball team which i've been on for forever she told her mom that i was bullying her which was a complete lie but then her mom went to the coaches she got me kicked off the team and they continued to spread rumors about me i ended up losing my best friends and even my boyfriend over the rumors that she spread about me so that's when i decided to get revenge so i decided that i was going to send her over an apology gift with makeup in it which was a mix of drugstore items and poison ivy so I put together an apology gift for her for um, bullying her, even though I did not. The gift that I put together was some makeup I got from Walgreens, but I decided to add some poison ivy to the eyeshadow so that she would get a rash. I then set up a hidden camera and watched as she put it on. And as expected, the rash started to form. After she noticed, I started to tell her off and accuse her of all the stuff she did to me. And she was so pissed that I managed to get a confession out of her. She was very much just like, yeah, I did that. Literally over me not wanting to spend every waking second with her. And the best part of it is that she threatened me on camera. So I cut out the part about the poison makeup and told her if she didn't tell my friends, coaches, and significant other what she was doing, I would send the video to everyone. So she admitted to all of her crimes and I got back on the team. I got my friends back and my boyfriend apologized. I ended up totally fine and she ended up losing credibility with basically everyone. So did you guys know that our typical search engines are only 4% of what we see on the web? Which is like Google, Bing, Firefox. I'm going to be talking about some of the most popular websites on the dark web. So get ready because this is going to be intense. So here's a photo example just to give you guys an idea of what this looks like. At the top is the area that we do our research for school on. Or stalker X's, I don't know. And then 500 times larger than the surface web is the deep web. The deep web is filled with information that we cannot access, such as medical documents, iCloud, personal information. Like I obviously can't Google what your family history or intake forms say, so that's where this is stored. And then the dark web holds the last 6%. This part of the internet was created by the U.S. Navy in the 1990s, and it was made so spies could share info without being tracked. Well, then the government decided to release it to the public. And you need the specific software to go to it called Tor, which stands for the Onion Router. It hides your identity and gives you access to non-surface web pages. And on this section of the internet, you can do things like buy people's credit card information, get counterfeit money, participate in drug trafficking, hire hackers and hitmen, and way worse. So all of these websites are listed in very long, hard-to-remember codes that change very frequently to avoid law enforcement. And instead of using .com, .org, .net, you use .onion. Well, one of the biggest websites on here is called Silk Road. This website is responsible for 1.1 billion in transactions in one year. It is a massive drug market. You can buy things like counterfeit money on here, also Facebook accounts to hack into, fake passports, stolen credit cards, and I may or may not know a few people who have gotten their fake IDs from there. Honestly, not uncommon. Now, there's also hitman websites on here as well. For example, you have something called Assassination Market. And y'all, this is insane. On this website, a victim will be added to a list of targets. Users will bid Bitcoin on when they think this target is going to die. The most accurate bidder gets the whole pot of Bitcoin. The problem is that many of these users start to just participate themselves so that they can win. Like they become the hitman. Which is way cheaper than just hiring an actual hitman. But there are theories on who's actually responsible in controlling all of this. Welcome back to my series on the dark web. The big theory surrounding the Hitman websites is that the government may still be in control of the dark web and be very aware of who is where, even though it appears that they're not. 
Because it was literally created by the government, how would you be safe from the government? And in actuality, the theory is that they may just be letting people do the dirty work for them. Like they're the ones who might actually be putting hits on people. But we will probably never know. The dark web goes so much deeper than this because of websites like Human Products, which sells food, belts, wallets, and clothing made from, you guessed it, humans. So I don't know if anyone's in need of a nipple belt, but this is literally the kind of things that they sell. Of course, there's even darker...